I just tested Apple's $11,000 Mac Studio and it's even crazier than you think. I won't lie, I stuck my nose up at the Mac Studio M3 Ultra. I knew it would be powerful, but with a configuration pushing into a fifth digit on pricing, I struggled to think of a situation where the Mac Studio would actually make sense. So when I tell you that the M3 Ultra Mac Studio is fantastic, know that I really mean it. It's a machine that can turn a skeptic into a fan, an unbeliever into an evangelist, and no, it's not for everyone. The Mac Studio manages feats that simply aren't possible elsewhere. Hey everyone, this is Jake with XDA, and I've been playing around with a tricked out Mac Studio with the M3 Ultra for the past few weeks, and I'm honestly blown away. But before getting into why this machine is so exciting, make sure to leave me a like down below and get subscribed so you don't miss any new videos from XDA. All right, let's get the price out of the way because yes, the Mac Studio is very expensive. I mean, really expensive. Apple offers up two flavors of the Mac Studio right now. You can get it either with an M4 Max, which has configuration starting at $2,000, or the M3 Ultra, which starts at $4,000. Apple's naming scheme at the high end is a bit confusing, but the Ultra chip is essentially two Max chips fused together. So the M3 Ultra is based on an older architecture compared to the M4 Max, but it's a much more capable chip overall. I hope that makes sense. The standard configuration of the M3 Ultra comes with a 28 core CPU, 60 core GPU, and 32 core neural engine. And alongside the chip itself, you can get up to 96 gigabytes of unified memory and one terabyte of storage for $4,000. With this version of the M3 Ultra, you can pack in a total of 256 gigabytes of unified memory and 16 terabytes of storage. However, there is a second configuration of the M3 Ultra chip. For an extra $1,500, you can get a 32 core CPU, 80 core GPU, and 32 core neural engine. This chip also unlocks up to 512 gigabytes of unified memory. You don't get that option with the 28 core version. One big issue I have with the pricing outside of just the fact that the machine is expensive is how much Apple charges for storage. The price per terabyte actually goes up as you climb, not down as you might expect. Storage is a relatively inexpensive and easy thing to add to a PC, but you have no options for upgrading the internal storage of the Mac Studio beyond spending thousands of dollars when you check out. I'd recommend getting a handful of external SSDs ready. The unit I have here is just short of maxed out, packing the 32 core M3 Ultra, 512 gigabytes of unified memory, and eight terabytes of storage. This configuration will run you $11,700 at the time of writing. Don't worry, I took out the white gloves every time I need to touch this thing. Pushed to the limit with 16 terabytes of storage, the max to you can cost as much as $14,000. That's a ton of money, no doubt about that, but it needs a little bit of context. The Mac Pro, which tops out with a 24 core M2 Ultra, 912 gigabytes of unified memory and eight terabytes of storage, will run you about $12,000, plus an extra $400 if you want wheels. Even building your own desktop that can compete with the M3 Ultra Mac Studio will run you north of 10 grand if you factor in a proper 32 core CPU like the Threadripper 7970X and a workstation GPU like the RTX A6000. Yes, the Mac Studio with the M3 Ultra is very expensive, but the price really isn't unreasonable for what you're getting, short of storage where Apple has put some arbitrarily high prices for extra capacity. It's really easy to forget about all of those specs the moment you unbox the Mac Studio. It's a chunky silver box, significantly bigger than the Mac Mini design it's based on, but it clocks in at just eight pounds. I mean, this is a PC that can even make a tricked out desktop with server grade components greened with envy. I don't like that you can't upgrade the Mac Studio, especially when it comes to storage, but Apple has a pretty compelling argument for locking off access given how tiny the Mac Studio really is. The connectivity is excellent too. Up front, you get a pair of Thunderbolt 5 ports alongside an SD card slot rated for up to UHS-2 SD cards. Around the back, you get an additional four Thunderbolt 5 connections, 10 gigabit ethernet, two USB-A ports rated for up to five gigabits per second, an HDMI 2.1 output, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. The Thunderbolt 5 connections are what really matter here though. With them, you can essentially add well, anything you want to the Mac Studio, be it monitors through DisplayPort 2.1, additional storage, or high bandwidth external accessories. 
Unfortunately, you don't get quite as cutting edge connectivity wirelessly. You have access to Bluetooth 5.3 and Wi-Fi 6E, and it's the Wi-Fi standard that's behind. Now, don't get me wrong, Wi-Fi 6E is super fast today, but I would have liked to see Wi-Fi 7 support given that everything else in the Mac Studio is on the bleeding edge of what's currently available to consumers. It's not super relevant right now, but it could be a few years down the line. All right, enough preamble, let's talk about performance. Here is what you need to know about the performance of the M3 Ultra. Short of something like a Threadripper, you won't find a PC that offers as much power as the Mac Studio does with the M3 Ultra. I have some benchmarks here to compare the M3 Ultra to flagship CPUs like the Ryzen 9 9950X 3D and Core Ultra 9 285K, but there isn't really much of a comparison at all. The M3 Ultra is in a completely different class of performance. The numbers you can see on screen speak for themselves on that front. In all core CPU tests like Cinebench and Geekbench, the M3 Ultra steals the show, which shouldn't come as a surprise. The chip offers at minimum a 28 core CPU, and the unit I'm testing here has 32 cores. These desktop chips from AMD and Intel really never stood a chance. A more apt comparison is to something like the Threadripper 7970X, which also comes with 32 cores. And yes, you will see higher multi-core performance with AMD's 32-core monster, but Apple still comes out way ahead when it comes to single-core speeds, and that balance is what makes the M3 Ultra so impressive. The CPU is only half of what's going on inside the M3 Ultra. You also get up to an 80-core GPU. Based on Geekbench, the GPU is powerful, but it's not offering anywhere close to the raw CPU power on display. With OpenCL, you're looking at performance somewhere around an RX 7800 XT or a Titan RTX. With Metal, there's nothing faster than the M3 Ultra, but it kind of wins by default in that category considering the latest non-Apple silicon to show up with Metal support came from AMD's RDNA 2 range. Putting the performance into a bit of context, the numbers for Photoshop and Premiere Pro look solid. The M3 Ultra is in shooting super far ahead of the x86 competition, and in some cases is even taking a slight back seat. That's largely due to the GPU though. The numbers here were gathered with a desktop RTX 4080 for the AMD and Intel chips. It's important to remember that at the end of the day, the M3 Ultra essentially has an integrated GPU. The fact that it's even in the same conversation is mighty impressive. These numbers are all well and good, but they don't really showcase how powerful the M3 Ultra really is. I wanted to simulate a power user scenario, so I threw the normal benchmarking process out the window and intentionally loaded up several apps to see how the performance would hold up when you're multitasking. There's a stark drop compared to the numbers I shared earlier in the video, but the chip still offers very similar and sometimes even better multi-core performance compared to flagship x86 CPUs. But here's why these numbers are so impressive. While running these tests, I had seven Docker containers running, Multipass running two Linux VMs, Parallels running a Windows 11 VM, and Steam downloading a game. And none of my VMs were suspended or running in the background. That's right, the M3 Ultra delivers performance that rivals flagship x86 CPUs even when it's loaded up with multiple Docker containers, VMs, and downloads. That's kind of insane, and it's a perfect demonstration of what kind of performance you can expect if you're able to leverage all the horsepower in the M3 Ultra. The M3 Ultra is powerful, but even more surprising is that it doesn't take a lot of power. Using a custom script, I was able to track the power usage of the CPU, GPU, and neural engine over time, and compared to what's happening in the world of x86 chips, the results are extremely impressive. That's immediately clear when you look at the CPU stress test. Again, using a custom script, I maxed out the CPU utilization with a full workload. The M3 Ultra climbed up to 90 watts and remained there. Recent x86 flagships can spike up to 200 watts in some cases, and with a proper 32-core Threadripper, you can easily climb into the 300-watt range during peak power usage. The M3 Ultra doesn't remain at that power draw for long either. In a more practical workload, you can see that the M3 Ultra mostly stayed under 60 watts during the few minutes it took to compile the Ladybird browser. There were a few spikes up to 80 watts, but this is a very CPU-heavy workload, and the M3 Ultra is able to manage excellent performance while barely sipping power. That's CPU power, but what about the GPU? Running DeepSeq R1 locally, which by the way took over 400 gigabytes of memory, the Mac Studio never tops 70 watts. This is an extremely demanding workload with a massive LLM running locally and the Mac Studio doesn't even climb into the triple digits. It's absurd in the best way possible. 
Speaking of DeepSeek, one of the more interesting aspects of the Mac Studio is its usefulness for AI. Sure, any powerful computer is capable of running AI workloads, but the M3 Ultra puts a different spin on what an AI computer can look like. That comes down to Apple's unified memory. The Mac Studio with an M3 Ultra supports up to 512 gigabytes of unified memory. You can pack that much memory into something like a Threadripper rig, uh, consumer flagships top out lower, but it's that unified bit that's so special. Its 512 gigabyte pool is available to both the CPU and GPU, meaning that your RAM doubles up as your VRAM if you want it to. That's something you're not going to get in a DIY desktop. Of course, we've seen this approach across a multitude of devices. Gaming handhelds like the ROG Ally X offer the ability to increase the VRAM at the cost of actual system RAM, and it's a somewhat similar approach. However, the difference is that all of these components are on the same board. Unified memory is truly unified, where the RAM works just as well for the GPU as it does for, well, any other case. And GPU memory is everything when it comes to running AI models. While you certainly could try running a model like DeepSeek R1 from your PC storage, the constant reference back to storage means that you'll struggle to find any kind of reasonable response time. Even the fastest SSDs pale in comparison to the speed of RAM. I mean, the fastest PCIe Gen 5 SSD tops out at like 11,000 megabytes per second in read speeds. In contrast, DDR5 at 8,000 megatransfers can transfer at a rate of 64 gigabytes per second. That's six times as fast. As a result, running a model as large as DeepSeek R1 is genuinely possible, and once it loads the entire model into RAM, its performance is nothing short of impressive. I mean, this is the kind of power that you might expect requires a high-end server PC, yet here it can run on machines smaller than most consumer-grade PCs. You don't just have to take my word for it either. You can see DeepSeek R1 running locally on the M3 Ultra Mac Studio for yourself. Sure, it's the 4-bit quantized version of DeepSeek R1, but there's very little in the way of quality loss compared to the full-size reasoning model without any quantization. And to make it clear, I'm using the third best DeepSeek R1 model here. The other two above it are too large to fit in the memory of the Mac Studio, coming in around 550 gigabytes and 710 gigabytes respectively. This model is over 400 gigabytes and it's running in what is essentially VRAM. And I can't stress this enough, it's running locally. It's yours and you can do whatever you want with it. When we think of the phrase AI computer, typically we think of things like a co-pilot powered PC or laptop. This completely recontextualizes that concept, but it's something that just isn't possible with any other mini PC or laptop aside from the Mac Studio. Now, before I get ahead of myself, I'm not saying you should go out and spend $12,000 in order to run a local AI model, but what I am saying is that in the cases where you need one of these machines anyway, this is an incredible additional perk that you wouldn't be able to get on any other machine. Your high-end development workstation with 512 gigabytes of RAM still couldn't run this model locally. It's only thanks to Apple's unified memory that you can do it here. But let's start wrapping this up. The Mac Studio isn't impressive because it's fast. You drop five figures on any computer and it better be fast. It's not impressive because of the hardware you can cram inside, and it's not impressive because of Apple's you know, user-friendly aura. It's impressive because it can pull off feats that other computers simply can't, and especially not at this price with the convenience of a pre-built PC. Unified memory makes the impossible possible for AI workloads, and Apple's careful power management allows you to get flagship CPU performance even when slamming the M3 Ultra with other applications. You really do need a reason to pick up this much power in this small of a package. The expanded unified memory helps a lot, but the M3 Ultra is wasted money if you aren't able to fully leverage its capabilities. This is a machine for developers, data scientists, and extreme power users. If you don't fall in that camp, you're spending too much. For those who do though, there's really nothing better than the Mac Studio. I want to know what your opinion is though. Drop me a comment below with your thoughts on the Mac Studio and make sure to get subscribed while you're down there. Alright, thanks for watching everyone. I will see you in the next video.